Now that the last remnants of evil natural water have been taken care of, we get to see how Saitama is doing with his new pet. Or pets plural in this chapter. Not only that, but the Hero Association has created a space for heroes and the privilege to be safer. Uh, sure. Anyway, let's jump into a chapter that is finally more focused on our favorite bald-headed protagonist. Seeing as Halloween is just around the corner, I guess Murata and One wanted to join in on the festivities somehow. For that, we get a super fun cover page featuring a lot of characters in amazing costumes. The main focus, these psychic sisters, are dressed up as witches. This is fitting for them since using telekinesis could look similar to someone using a spell if you don't know any better. Also, they might be getting a spotlight due to the arc we are currently entering being named after them. Looking more closely, the basket they have is filled with interesting easter eggs, like Saitama being peas in a pod due to his round head. Then we get gems like Pig God dressed as a literal pig and Watchdog Man as a different furry animal, a panda, as well as King as Frankenstein's monster, Sonic as a cat, Sweet Mask as the devil, Metal Bat as an Oni, Atomic Samurai as a ghost, not too sure why on that one, Drive Knight looking like the perfect headless horseman, and even Monaco way in the back as something with a frilly headpiece. Finally, the best costumes are Flashy Flash as a knight in shining armor, Bang as a wannabe Merlin, Zombie Man as Jason with a hockey mask, and Super Alloy Darkshine as a mummy. Or I think that's what he's going for. His muscles kind of broke out of the wrapping. Back to the chapter now. With a title like New Home, it's hard not to know what you're going to see next. But we bet you didn't expect it to start with Saitama screaming his lungs out at Black S still pretending to be a pet. Funnily enough, he says, I can barely handle a dog, let alone some weird monkey. Considering how little faith Genos has for Saitama even taking care of Rover, this is a pretty hilarious statement coming from him, especially since Saitama thinks his only issue is time. When Black S's weird monkey sounds don't get the job done, he switches to speaking normally, shocking Saitama with his knowledge of human language. Even though Saitama rejected him, he won't take no for an answer and follows along offering to help with chores and whatnot. And it's interesting that Black S can go from such innocent, begging expressions to such a devious look when Saitama's back is turned. Apparently, his inner thoughts about not being found out as a monster can't be contained to just his mind. His plan, surprising no one, involves hiding out at Saitama's home while he waits for some cells to regenerate. Meanwhile, Saitama faces his own crisis, unsure whether his new place allows pets. That is easily solved, though. He can just make a doghouse outside for Rover. Black S is more than happy to hear that, wanting to make that place his hideout. Still deep in thought, Saitama barely reacts when Black S puts himself in charge of the new dog, explaining that his name is Rover. The reason Saitama's mind is elsewhere is because he's remembering his small monster friend Monaco. But he's not very good with names, so he describes her as Sasadango, due to the belt she had tied around her waist. With only a vague shape and a single eye to go off of, Black S immediately pictured Gyoro Gyoro instead. He might have never met Monaco to begin with, seeing as he was among the elite of the Monster Association. Regardless, because of Saitama's specific food comparison, Black S thinks that it is likely not his boss. Maybe these guys are just really hungry, and that's why they're using so many food descriptors. The conversation continues with no one really getting a satisfying answer, and Saitama wondering if Tatsumaki might have taken out Monaco. As their conversation tapers off, Saitama notices his new apartment building, or should we say, gigantic complex. It is so massive that you can see it from far off in the distance, almost looking like a pyramid in the desert. But it is certainly nice to see Saitama seeming so positive, as he says, my new home, when he slowly walks towards it with his new pets in tow. As Black S praises the size and clear defensive capabilities of the home, a sign in the background indicates that they have a 2 kilometer walk to get there. It's not a very long walk, but it is certainly not easy for someone as small as Black S, which could explain why he is riding Rover as if he is a horse. Delving inside the new construct, next we see someone speaking to the new residents of the apartment complex with a projector next to him. According to this worker, it took the combined expertise of the entire Hero Association to make this building into a reality. But before we continue to get into the nitty gritty of the new apartments, don't forget to subscribe with notifications on so you never miss a video, and also smash that like button for some more One Punch Man videos. Nearby, two A-Class heroes discuss being called out of the blue, not even understanding the purpose of the meeting. Though we have seen them before, it has been a while, and it was back during the beginning of the Monster Association arc. At the time, so many heroes were involved that it was hard to keep track of them all. Back to them though, the one with a garden on his head explains that the facility is made to hold at least several hundred households, but since it is reserved for people tied to the association, they had to find other ways to fill the empty apartments. That's why they're holding this meeting among the rich, hoping to entice them to take one of the luxurious places available. Not only is this the most high-tech facility, it would be the safest you could find in almost any city. Maybe having Watchdog Man is better, but that's to be seen. 
Focusing on the crowd of listeners, it is obvious these are the most wealthy people, with most of them being older men. With a serious look, Plant Man, as I'm calling him until his name is properly revealed, explains that more and more people are willing to pay whatever it takes to make sure they can be safe. I thought for sure the Battlesuit dude was going to disagree with that decision, but actually, he completely understands it. In fact, he says, monster disasters these days are no joke. And seeing as a war just concluded with the Monster Association, he is obviously right. Apparently, demon level threats would only show up once per month before, and now it is far more than that. Kinda makes you wonder if someone is behind the increased attacks. Back to the presentation, the smiling agent confidently says that monsters are no threat at all for the newly built complex. Gotta give it to him, he's really trying to sell it to these rich people. At least there is the fact that the Hero Association members are among the tenants, so that does help. Not only that, but he points out that the heroes have to be A-class or higher to even live there and are elites with proven track records. With that, many of the people in the crowd are pleased and consider taking him up on the offer to live there. Honestly, some of them seem rich through sketchy means, like the guy with the scar across his cheek and even the dude with the Hitler-esque mustache in the back. But I guess you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, right? Whatever. As the speech continues, the man finally reveals why the two heroes are there. They are residents and are meant to confirm the presence of the A rank and above heroes available to protect them. To make matters worse, they are told, along with the crowd, that they are to be personal bodyguards to these elite people. With that, we are finally given names to the two poor saps. A rank 25 Crescent Eyebrow and A rank 24 Green. Just a note, in Japanese, Eyebrow's name translates directly to Crescent Moon Thick Brows. But I guess that's too much of a mouthful. Where in the previous solemn look, Green realizes that is why he was allowed to stay in the complex rent free while Eyebrow is visibly panicking beside him. When a rich woman finally gets some spotlight, it is to voice her concerns with the so called safest complex. She rightfully points out that it doesn't mean safety is completely guaranteed, seeing as the heroes are only human too. As if predicting the comment, the agent has a retort ready though, because heroes wouldn't really be absolute safety, since they can also be worn out or get into accidents. While he goes on talking about no hero being absolute in this sense, we are immediately shown Saitama. He is, well, pretty absolute as far as we know. And with his addition of a mini rover and black S at his side, I'd say he's building a pretty strong group of associates. Going back to the meeting, the man points out that only people can't be described as absolute. And now the projector comes into more use as he reveals that they are going to start a special presentation only meant for the attendees. In big bold letters, the screen says, This is the Hero Association's secret weapon with exciting music in the background. Apparently, Green and Eyebrow were aware of this because as the screen shows the new defensive system, they are discussing among themselves. The system is described as integrated anti-monster disaster defense, but when it is shown, it just looks like a mass amount of Metal Knight robots. And in fact, it is confirmed because they point out that it was designed by him because he is an authority on military development technology. Surprising no one at all, they are meant to sense any threats and eliminate them before they can invade the premises, which sounds good on paper, but anyway. The good thing is that these AI robots are around 24 hours a day, allowing the heroes to at least get some downtime while they can. But the way that the video boasts about them not letting any monsters get inside, it is begging for it to be proven wrong, am I right? Besides, we already know of a monster who can easily go in and out without having to worry about being stopped, Saitama. As if to insult the two heroes attending the meeting, there is mention that Metal Knight believes his security system to be more effective than all A-class heroes combined. Now, we may not be heroes or have this kind of society, but that's just cold. Ibro looks rightfully insulted, while Green takes it with the same serious and unhappy expression. He even admits it is humiliating. And of course, there is one last attempt at proving how effective the system is by claiming it is absolute, which leads us to a beeping alarm sounding off. At the front of the complex, Saitama stands with his new pets, trying to get in. However, the system has identified dangerous factors. I know it is referring to Rover and Black S seeing as they are monsters, but I feel like it should also be ringing because of Saitama's inhuman capabilities. As the alarm continues blaring, Saitama is visibly confused by what triggered it. Oblivious as usual, he suspects it is a metal detector and wonders if it is because of the items he found in the wreckage, like his wire hangers and frying pan. Saitama even wonders if he should just throw them away, but he really needs them after all, so he decides against that. All the while, the system double checks the threat and measures their danger level, preparing to intercept them. Saitama looks on, even more confused, wondering if he might have pressed the button. Black S almost seems concerned with how bad Saitama is with technology, pointing out that he's not good with machines. At last, a robot exits the facility, preparing to confront the threat. It beeps a few times, almost seeming to have a stare down with them. Saitama looks bored, Black S looks worried, and Rover 
Well, I can't tell with the six eyes. When the robot decides it is on, it's on. It moves in extremely fast, clearly poised to attack the two smaller monsters. Black S freaks out trying to run away, while Saitama just stands there with his bucket. When the robot is about to strike, all Black S can do is cower in fear, while Rover was clearly about to launch his own blast. That is, had Saitama not chopped off pieces of the AI. Not only that, but each chop is punctuated by a word of annoyance. What. The. Hell. He basically smacks the life out of the machine, leaving nothing but broken parts in its wake. This is followed by a massive explosion that honestly seems too much for just one robot to make, but I guess it had a lot of unstable chemicals inside of it. As the smoke from the blast clears, Saitama is shown a bit worse for wear and finally looking slightly more concerned by the situation. Behind him, Black S and Rover look on with fear. More are coming, says Black S, and we hear that the defense system has readjusted the threat level from level 1 to level 4. And that is because of Saitama's involvement, obviously. Giant jellyfish looking robots appear, pointing their sensors directly at them in preparation to destroy. It paints a terrifying scene, quite frankly, one that is really similar to the machines from the Matrix or Terminator Salvation. Without wasting any time, they begin to shoot at the perceived threats. I mean, completely unloading all the weapons they have installed. At this, Black S and Rover are forced to flee, and it is really nice to see the executives being there for each other. A lot of the blasts fired each hit Saitama directly, bouncing off of him or miss him altogether. Annoyed, Saitama says, when appliances is act up, you can usually fix them with a good smack. And as we get a close-up shot of his palm ready to strike, I kind of feel bad for the AIs. Interestingly, the next panel is designed like American-style comics with smack in a big, eye-catching font style. Back inside, the security guards were clearly not expecting an attack so soon. One of them was napping, and his nose bubble pops when these systems indicate that there is a problem going on outside. The one with sunglasses stands from his seat, shocked that the defense systems are activated. As they try to pinpoint the monster or what the cause is, they can't because of all the smoke covering the area. Because of that, they decide to call on the heroes to assess the situation going on at gate number 9, now. Heroes like Lightning Max, who tried to help Suiru during the Super Fight arc, are contacted via emergency call. But there is one problem. The place is so big, they can't remember where gate number 9 is. Instead, they have to use their hero instincts and try to find it through sound. As we get back to Saitama's destruction, it is obvious he broke every obstacle that was blocking him from going inside the complex. Massive chunks of robot limbs and pieces of debris are scattered everywhere at the entrance. But all Saitama is bothered by is why human attacking robots were able to get into the headquarters. He even goes as far as to say the security is lax, clearly having no idea how much he has set them back with what he has just demolished. Behind him, Black S is getting a bad feeling because of what just happened. As Saitama calmly makes his way deeper inside the facility, Black S and Rover along with him, agent after agent runs past them, trying to find the source of the explosions. One of them stops to question Saitama, but before Kate Baldy can out himself as the culprit, someone else says, Ah, the defense robots. These things cost 9 billion each to develop. And finally, we have Saitama realizing not only how badly he messed up by destroying them, but that they were certainly not against him in the first place. His eyes bulge so comically wide that it is almost refreshing to see him have such intense facial expressions that don't involve missing grocery sales. As he begins sweating profusely, knowing he is the cause of this mess, Black S worries nearby as he clinks to Rover's side, praying he is not caught. Not wanting to have to pay damages, seeing as he has basically no money and no belongings to his name, Saitama lies. Even from far, we can see the sweat pouring off of his shiny bald head. He quietly says they just exploded, but that's not enough for the agent to be satisfied. He demands to know every detail that Saitama can give him. Just as the situation looks hopeless, a familiar voice speaks up. What he said is true. It's none other than Saitama's gaming friend, King. For someone with a reputation like him backing Saitama up, there is no way they would question the lie, right? With his appearance, the agents are so blown away from just seeing the F-Class hero that they seem to forget the issue altogether. Rather, they want to know why he didn't say he was coming. Imagine that. King is like a full-on celebrity for the Hero Association. Must be nice. After that small exchange, Saitama takes King aside with a guilty look. He found the game he had borrowed from him, but it didn't survive the battle, which makes sense. Looking upset even with himself, Saitama hands it to King, saying it was all busted up. Again, despite Saitama destroying his stuff or erasing his saved game, King is not bothered and doesn't look mad in the slightest. He admits he came to try out a new fighting game, but Saitama is immediately annoyed since King doesn't show any mercy to newbies. With that rejection, King leads to go feed his goldfish. Which, is that a new development? I don't remember ever hearing about him having a pet. Black S, still hanging on for dear life to Rover's fur, overhears them. King's name is recognizable to everyone, and Black S is no exception. Realizing way, 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 way too late that he is in the Hero Association's headquarters, 
Black S starts worrying for a whole new reason. Remember the headphone hero that was coming to confront Saitama last time? Well, we get to see him again as he overhears King and Saitama chatting in the hall. The guy in the frog suit doesn't say anything, but it is clear that he also feels intimidated by Saitama's connection to the S-Class hero. If only they knew he was friends with Genos and Bang too. As they all whisper about him wondering who the newbie is, it is finally revealed. Saitama has been promoted to an A-Class hero. In a mostly plain but large shot, Saitama's new ranking is A-Class number 39. But man, that Kate Baldy hero name has to go, and that will come into play later. But for now, that's all we have for the new chapter. Was there anything that surprised you? Are you excited to see where we go from here? And how well do you think Saitama will take care of his new pets? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching, and have an awesome day. I love you.